Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James. Hope you guys are all doing well and this is my guide to single player settings on Ark Survival Evolved. This is an updated guide to my original one. I plan to condense all the information down at the start and then go on to talk about some of the problems we had when completing the game myself on this channel. This guide accompanies my series and it's also aimed at anyone wishing to try and defeat all of the bosses and ascend from any of the maps. I'm going to be going through all the settings that I'm running. I haven't changed very much from the original settings but this is a briefer overview and a more of an explanation as to why these settings are the way they are. So let's just jump into the settings quick and then we'll talk about some of the problems you might face. And Ark is five years old, can you believe? And if you're on PC and you actually want to find a multiplayer map, I am running a cluster server with the community, and we've currently got Ragnarok and the Crystal Isles map going as well. So you're welcome to join. All of the information is in my Discord in the links below. So let's just jump into the settings, and we're gonna go through general settings first. These ones are the easier changes to make. And starting with difficulty level at the top, we want to take that all the way up to one. The reason we're doing this is because we want 150 level dinos spawning in our map, and that complying with another setting will do that. XP we're changing to 2.0. Taming speed we're going to put on times six. Anything much higher than that, and your dinos do tame a little bit too quick. Harvest amount we're going to change to 2.0. Double in the amount you can gather. And let's carry on down here. Now I'm going through the settings I'm using and I'm actually gonna tape Crosshair off the screen. There are a lot of attachments and stuff you can get for weapons in the game that actually give you a crosshair. So in my playthrough, I don't have it. I'm also gonna put show player map location as it helps you guys when I do the map transitions in the game. Maximum difficulty, so that ticked with difficulty level at the top will make sure our loot crates and our dinos are high, spawning at 150. We must make sure that use single player settings is enabled and use corpse locator. That uh, gives a beam of green light in the sky for 20 minutes so you can locate your bag. Because if you die and a dino eats you, you're looking for a bag in the bushes. So it helps to have that. They've now integrated S Plus into the game. So disable structure placement collision and platform floors. We enable both of those. There are aspects of S Plus that are now integrated into the game. Allow unlimited respects means you can use the mind wipe tonic as many times as you need to. And let's jump into the advanced menu. The first setting we're gonna change in here is allow cave building in PVE. This helps if you need to put some storage chests down and things near the cave just to grab the artifacts. Remember there's 10 caves on the island map. So there's 10 artifacts that you need to grab three times. So it helps to be able to put these things in when you're farming the cave. Uh, allow flyer carrier PVE, I've put that on, even though we're not likely to have any players with us. Diseases, it's your preference as to whether you stick them on. I prevent them and they are prevented on most private servers. It's just a, a bit of a pain mechanic. So I tend to drop that one from the playthrough and it is disabled in my playthrough. This is important to get right. The baby mature speed, we're gonna set it at 0 0.815 and the baby cuddle interval multiplier is gonna be set at 0 0.2. This will mean if you are imprinting your rexes and you're probably going to be using rexes to fight the boss on the island map it will take you five imprints to get a full imprint and each imprint will be at a space of about 15 minutes i made a mistake in my first video and what i meant to say was take egg hatch speed up to time six that will mean that they will hatch in about three minutes or the rexes will and i forgot to mention about the crops as well in this guide i turned both of them up to six on my playthrough as well uh, but back to me with those quick ramblings uh, but the mating interval will take down to 0.1 as well now this means the male will be ready to mate straight away but the female is going to have to wait three minutes this gets rid of you being able to get lots and lots of eggs one after the other. Next setting I'm going to change from my playthrough will be nighttime speed is on 3.0 but I suggest you leave yours at default. I'm doing this mainly for my playthrough on YouTube because the darks don't show up very well on YouTube at all. 
and if you're struggling and you really need to make the game a little bit easier this is where I would adjust things in player stats per level I would up your health to two or three and stamina and try it like that because changing the dinosaur stats and changing anything else doesn't necessarily make it easier when it comes to playing with the bosses uh, one thing I did skip over in the last single player settings was allow dino raid feeding and um, custom recipes is ticked by default so we can make better food and drinks if you want to experiment with that but allow dino raid feeding I've personally never tamed up the titanosaurus or any of the raid dinos but if you do that just means that they will be able to be fed and you can keep them supply loot crates by default and fishing loot quality set to 5.0 and we're going to leave it at that because arcs loot is terrible enough as it is however i will put increase platform structure limit that allows us to do some of them interesting boat builds and things that i've done previously and you want to be able to put as many structures down on that and remember the motorboat can travel faster so you can put more structures on it and as well it can outrun Alethictus so if you want to do a good boat with lots of structures on it try using the motorboat later on so that covers the single player settings that I'm going to be using on Scorched Earth all of these settings of like I say apply to all formats whether you're on PC console or Xbox however if you are on PC and you do want to use mods I would recommend a better loot quality mod and the stack mod this is very very difficult playing without the stack mod now during my playthrough on the island map arc did up the amount of hide you could carry halfway through from 100 per stack to 200 but this really comes into play when making these ascendant saddles or some of the high tier stuff that you're going to need you can't fit it in your smithy so in this case you're going to have to use an argent tavis or craft it in an rg saddle for the sheer amount of stuff that it asks you for to create some of these saddles it can only be done in a dino saddle so if you're on pc i would certainly recommend installing a better stack mod some of the other problems that we run into if you're playing this on single player and if you're playing it solo then you're going to be playing with the intention of trying to beat the game like I have and to do that on the island map there's 10 caves to face and 10 artifacts to find now in my case a few times when I went into these caves the artifacts weren't spawning and it happened in particular with the artifact of the sky lord and the artifact of the strong both of them snow caves were pretty much glitched out and I couldn't get the artifact. It is frustrating. I've had so many of you comment about this because if you go and delve deeper and you look into this on forums, you're not alone. This happens quite a lot of times. Now there's two fixes I've got for this and I never had to cheat to complete the game. As you enter a cave, you will notice that the screen will lag out when it has loaded in. You will drop a lot of frames. After you've experienced that lag, then go back to the previous cave and see if it's fixed it. There was also a fix that I did in the episode, The Artifact of the Sky Lord, where I went in to spectator mode before I went into the cave and I went through the ground in the floor and then I tried to find my way out and this caused it to spawn in. I showed it much better. I, I briefly try and show you again. I did manage to do it. It did spawn in again. So you can do it through spec potato mode and going through the floor if it's not spawning in. But my advice is go into the cave. If it hasn't spawned in, go into another cave and try it on another day. When it comes to me doing the Artifact of the Strong episode, I kept checking back in that cave. I must have checked about 10 times and no enemies were spawning in that cave. The day I checked and enemies were spawning in, I was like, right, I'm ready to go. I had a dinosaur ready to go. We went in and I recorded that episode. So there was always another cave to do before it. There was always something else to tame or do. I've had comments from people saying that this is actually happening on the servers as well. So we can't expect wildcard are not going to fix this problem with the artifacts not spawning in the cave. So it is frustrating. Just have a plan B and bear in mind that both of the snow caves are the ones that in my playthrough and from what I can see on the forums these are the ones that were difficult to be able to get the artifacts to spawn in these were the ones that tend to have the problems those two caves 
And finally, the next issue I want to talk about when you're going to go to complete this game. It's going to take you some time. These are good balance settings. But during the time that you're playing it, you may get an event. We've currently got the five year event going on right now. But if you happen to be like myself and playing this over the November or Christmas period, we had the problem last year of the Dodo Rex not despawning. So these events happen and the Dodo Rex is an enemy that's supposed to go away with the sunrise but on my map it wouldn't despawn and it ended up spawning in every possible location it could. So in order to get around this you are going to have to do the destroy wild dino command. Destroy wild dinos is not going to kill any of your tames. You'll just notice a brief freeze and then after that dinosaurs will start spawning back in. After a month or so of running this game you are going to notice that things start to get clogged up. We could think of it as Ark haven't bothered to patch any of this stuff that makes it difficult for the single player, but this game was never meant to be played as a single player, so you're going to have to act as the overseer yourself in this case and allow that command to happen two or three times throughout your playthrough. Don't abuse it, don't do it too much, honestly you don't need to, but certainly after an event or maybe after three or four weeks of running your game in single player settings you need to allow that command in order to refresh that map and that covers it for my overview of the single player settings for Ark Survival Evolved I hope you enjoy them, they're a balanced playthrough let me know what you thought if you'd like some extra help don't forget to subscribe as I covered my whole playthrough over 29 videos showing you exactly how to solo the Ark currently playing through the Scorched Earth map and it's my intention to complete all four of the Canon DLCs in a solo run. So for more tips and tricks on how to go about doing this in what order and more of the story then don't forget to subscribe. But until next time I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.